This is Mark Hoffman, Crazy Mountain Extreme Snowmobiles, Motorsports, uh, whatever. The name of the business is Crazy Mountain Motorsports. The name of the snowmobile that we build is called the Crazy Mountain Extreme. We started building our own sleds, and when we first started doing that, we were doing that for our own needs, not as a business. We never, we never dreamt that we'd be building snowmobiles for other people as a business. And pretty soon the phone rings and this guy goes, wow, I really like what you guys built there. He goes, uh, I want you to build one for me. And I just laughed at him and I go, oh, you couldn't afford it. You know, it's crazy. And, you know, because sleds were selling for four or five thousand bucks at the time. And one off stuff is pricey. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> trust me, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Prototypes are, are ridiculously expensive. Oh, absolutely. And so... He goes, well, how much would it cost? I go, well, it's going to be over $12,000. And he goes, no, I want no. one. Yeah. Okay, build me one. So that was the, the start of what became the Crazy Mountain Extreme and the Crazy Mountain Motorsports as a business. When we build the sled from start to finish, we pay attention to every detail, every aspect of it, and every component and is specifically designed and engineered to be to do the job it's doing and be as light as it can and still be strong and reliable. We start with the Pro RMK cast aluminum bulkhead and overstructure and we modify all of those components because we run a 16 inch wide track and so we have billet machined aluminum side plates that actually go between the stock cast aluminum bulkhead and then the rest of the CMX chassis um, and from there on out, it's all CMX stuff. And of course, the front suspension is all CMX. We change the geometry. Uh, the caster angle is 16 degrees on the CMX X, and it's 26 degrees on the Pro RMK. And what do you feel that does for you, Brad? It's amazing the difference that it makes. I rode several different caster angles before we settled on the 16 degrees, and when I rode the 26 degrees, I hated it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're, we're selling these kits to guys with pro RMKs and they're calling and go, wow, my sled side deal really good before, but there's no comparison to how it does now. The Chrome Ali A arms with the CMX spindles. Now the reason the spindles are part of the package is because when we changed the caster angle, it changed the height of the steering arm where the tie rod attaches right here. So we had we couldn't use stock spindles. They're you know they're a nice piece. Why would we spend the money to have billet machined aluminum right. instead of the cast Polaris pieces? Um, so when we did that, obviously we wanted the wing design. If you're going to be pushing something through the snow, you don't want to push a barn door. You want to push something that's got a nice shape to it. And so that allowed us to do that and make a really nice part. But like I say, the reason we had to do that was so that we could change the steering arm heights to get rid of bump steer. Because mm -hmm. if we would have left the steering arm height alone, when you hit a bump, your skis would have been going like that, and you'd have had a tremendous amount of bump steer. Right now we have zero bump steer. Your your hood's just cool as well get up. Well, well, thanks, and I'm really happy with the body work. We had a tremendous amount of help from uh, Skins Protective Gear. Yep. And Jake Hawksworth, he's an awesome engineer. He's 25 years old. And... Would you like to be a 25? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a good head start on things. But Jake was instrumental in the design of our plastic. Um, I personally love the, the airframes. I've seen them a lot, at least in the racing side. But absolutely not going to get snow bound up in them. The rear skid on this is was your own design? This was a Mountain M10. Okay. So it has uh, the patented components that we used, we purchased from Polaris. And then we changed the geometry from uh, over the years and uh, refined that quite a bit. But this also has Raptor shocks on it. Um, the main thing that we look for in a rear suspension besides ride quality is the ability to control transition, ski lift. Mm -hmm. And it always has been because we've always ran big horsepower. The relationship that we've got with you made that even more important. Yeah, it? absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the seat in this is it's very narrow, and it's more of a motocross seat. But it makes it very easy to get over. 
It, it it really does. That's something that we did on our on our rim shop, and you know when you talk about a motocross seat, we actually use a KTM seat off my KTM bike. <laughs> I was building the race sleds, and I wanted something small, tight, and I was looking around the shop, and of course you know it's not like you got a whole catalog of stuff sitting in your shop. I looked over and I've got a KTM um, 525. I'm like, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Pulled the seat off there, held it up. I'm like, yeah, that works good. So then we ended up building more of those race sleds. And we're like, what are we going to do for a seat? What do you mean, what are we going to do? <laughs> Catalog, opened up replacement, or got replacement right? seats for KTM. and Oh, sweet. So our, our race sleds have KTM on them. <laughs> <laughs> Fabcraft actually builds our handlebars for us, and these are Chrome Molly. Yep. And uh, it's got a CMX mountain bar on it. It's not a lot of sweep. Very, it's a very straight bar. Five degrees tilt back. Yep. And wider than stock. You know, we came from the motocross world. Yep. I mean, we, we rode motorcycles and snowmobiles. And, and so um, once somebody's ridden the five-degree sweep, they actually like it better than, you know, most of them are back like 15 degrees. Obviously, an Aero Charger 200, 250. Um, it's, a, it's a similar setup, yet very different. You do things uh, a little different. You want to tell us what you, what you do different? Well, we were using a starting line single pipe. Okay. And then, unlike the rest of the world, we are, uh, I don't know if I want to give all these secrets away. <laughs> we're using it. Well, we won't share them. <laughs> Trust me, we're not paying attention. Let's see. Yeah, right. <laughs> Brad, what we learned was uh, we were using a stock Polaris pipe for a while, mm -hmm. yeah, but we were still cutting it and putting the larger Stinger outlet. Right. Um, but we got to buy a pipe anyhow, so... We, right. we couldn't get a Polaris pipe, and so I thought, you know what, we're going to try a starting line single. Yep. We got the pipe in, did the mod to it, put it on the sled, two sleds side by side, and it's just rit, 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 just like naturally aspirated. I mean, we're seeing bumps on the trail, and we're just yep. popping the throttle and hopping and landing on the back slope of the next one. And the other one was close to that with the stock pipe, but noticeable difference, better bottom end you know just more responsive so right um bang done deal we got to do that the thing i like about the way we have the the vein set is our power comes on just lineal it's so smooth yeah. the power delivery is very controllable it's not light switch power you're not waiting for it and then bang it's all there and you know i mean when you're doing technical writing and it's beneficial to have a smooth lineal power. Can you tell me what this little part is? Um, this is uh, one of our belt drive shafts. This bearing, this has an inch and three eighths ID. Yep. Super heavy duty, it's a 207 bearing. Okay. This bearing goes on right here and it's housed in our belt drive plate. Right. Which bolts to the chassis exactly where the Pro RMK case or belt drive plate bolts to. Um, and our sprocket goes directly on to the shaft, which this hub is part of the shaft. Okay. Reason being is we don't have any splines in our drive system. Everything, you know, it's the sprocket is bolted directly to here. Mm -hmm. So there's no room for error, there's no movement. It's rock solid. There's no slop. So then they're, you know, if the two pieces can like... move a little bit, they eventually wear each other out, right. gall on each other. And then, but, but worse, on the belt drive, belt drives are very, very sensitive to tension. And if that were cocked off at all, as it goes around, your belt tension is constantly changing. Exactly. Not an issue with yours, I see. All right, so this is the belt drive that you developed in 99. I mean, that's long time ago. Belt drives are popular now because players are putting them on OE, but tell us about your belt drive and, and why it looks different than a lot of others. Um, it's been quite an evolution uh, with the design of the belt drive. We, we learned a lot over the years and you know we listened to the engineers from Gates with regards to belt tension and center distance. That is perfect belt tension. You can see I can take my finger and put about one pound of pressure on there and I can make it touch 
the back of the brake caliper. Which brings up point, Which your brake caliper. Well, you'll notice it's on it's the bottom not where shaft. It <laughs> usually comes on a Polaris, you know, power plant. Right. If we put the brake on the top, every time we hit the brake, we're going to put a, a reverse torque load on the belt instead of driving the belt. We're now asking it to stop in the other direction, and you got all the momentum of the track and everything going 100 mile an hour, and you stab that brake, and your top sprocket is your smaller diameter, so you're putting all of that force through this amount of tooth contact versus, you know, our system doesn't know that there's a brake on it because it is after the drive system. Right. The only failures we've ever seen was due to improper installation. Too tight a belt tensioner. Too tight a belt. Which, and, you know, having a belt tensioner is absolutely the right way to do it because you can get correct belt tension as long as it's, it's done correctly to where what we're seeing on the market now, no belt tensioner, is what it is. Right, wrong, or indifferent, it, there's no change in it. Right. What's involved in taking this belt drive and putting it in a pro? It is so simple. All the fasteners that hold my belt drive plate on um, are the same ones that hold the chain case on the 11 and 12 or the belt drive plate on the 13 Pro. Okay. So it's so simple. They can unbolt their equipment, the jack shaft, the track shaft. Their complete system goes away. Our system comes with everything you see here, including the steel braided brake line that hooks onto their stock master cylinder. Okay. Um, so it's all the bolts, all the bearings, high quality NTN bearings. And then the advantage that they get, other than the obvious, um, is the drop and roll. Our system moves the drive shaft down an inch and back an inch from stock location. So the guy wants to run a three inch track. No problem. I mean, the, the machine work is, is beautiful on all this stuff. You can get a closer look at the spindles here. You know, they're, they're beautiful. And, well, Brad, it's just like your turbo. I choose to buy a, a way more expensive turbo. Why do I do that? Because I tell people, we don't look for the cheapest parts. We look for the best parts when we're building this type of equipment. And we always have. Yep. It's never been about cheap this or cheap that. It's what is the very best parts we can use. So that's what leads you to titanium, chromoly, carbon fiber, exotic materials. Or unobtainium. Unobtainium. We've got most. some of that in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, Mark, thanks for your time. Get joined by your son, which his name is um, Cameron. Let's see. We're just checking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what else do you have coming up? Anything new for next year? Anything you can let, let the cat out of the bag on? Not really. We've got some things that we're thinking about and working on, and always evolving. Always and thinking. Isn't it? Absolutely. Yep. Anyhow, be uh, be exciting to. Uh, to, to continue this and uh, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>